What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. It's been a little while since I made a mac and cheese, so here I am making one for you, very fall themed. I made a French onion soup inspired mac and cheese with Gruyere, added some goat cheese in there, and a triple cream. Kind of like a brie, but like even creamier. I had some leftover brioche that I just pulsed in the food processor to turn into crumbs, and then I topped the mac and cheese with that, along with some more Gruyere and some fresh sage. I am gonna get into this because, guess what? It's getting dark. There are so many caramelized onions in here. I mean, so many. All right, guys, let's get into this. And we can talk more. It tastes like French onion soup, and I'm, I'm like not even joking a little bit. It tastes exactly like French onion soup. Yay! This pasta, I'm loving for this too. Great for mac and cheese because it's got those little grooves. Trapped the cheese in there, and it's kind of like the caramelized onions, how they're long. That is so good. The onions get so rich and sweet when they're caramelized down like that. Those cheeses, they're fairly mild, but the Gruyere is actually pretty sharp. The more aged the Gruyere, the more like Parmesan-y it'll be. And I think that's pretty much the same with like Gouda too. They'll get harder and have like the crystallization if you have like bite down on like little kind of crystals. <laughs> I mean, honestly, definite success. So I've made mac and cheese several different ways. Today, I made a bechamel sauce first, which means I start with a roux, which is butter and flour. I browned the butter for that little extra added depth of flavor. Then I added milk, but also added beef bone broth, which is really high in protein, and beef broth is in French onion soup. Then obviously we added the caramelized onions, some Dijon mustard, a little bit of nutmeg, salt and pepper. It tastes simple, like that you can taste like most of the ingredients in it individually, but it also tastes super complex, very savory. Mm. I love getting the little pieces of the crispy brioche breadcrumbs and I'm so glad that I added cheese on top too. You get that nice like stringiness when you kind of pull up on it like so. <laughs> amazing. And you get like that whiff of sage which to me first of all goes like amazingly with brown butter but it's like so very fall. 
it just kind of gives you the feels the sage is like one of those nostalgic flavors very traditional for like stuffing Mm. Hands down, one of the most successful mac and cheeses I've ever made. First try. And I have some New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc to drink it with. This is my absolute favorite white wine. And especially with mac and cheese, the really, really bright acidity from the Sauvignon Blancs just kind of cuts through the richness, which I'm a fan of. Because then I feel like I can eat more of it. What a great strategy. The noodles, I cooked five minutes. The direction said seven to eight minutes for al dente, but I knew I was gonna add it to the pot with the hot liquid, put it in the oven, etc. So I knew it was gonna just continue to cook. And it's actually still like al dente, which is great because when I heat this up for leftovers, it won't just like turn to mush, it'll still really hold its shape well. So, I'm super excited because Shane and I decided we're having a Christmas party. So we're having some friends over and it's gonna be a Christmas costume party. I've got the best outfit, it's sparkly, of course. And we're gonna put string lights all over our ceiling. I've got like a whole menu planned out. I'm really excited because it's not potluck type thing. I have like full control. I'm like a very much a control freak. I have full control of the entire menu, the whole experience. I'm really excited about it. So I'll have to like update you guys as it gets closer and then like when we actually have the party to tell you how it went. You see the long string of cheese hanging? So. 
So it is getting dark. I wanted to tell you guys a story of the surprise birthday party that I threw for Shane for his birthday. What was it? Like after a year of being together, basically, because we met on not on his birthday, but like right around the time of his birthday, because it was for his birthday party. And so the next year I rented out this space in West Palm Beach. It was a bar and it was just a full on surprise and I wanted it to be like glow in the dark paint party. I don't know if you know this about Shane and I, but we really love like glowy, sparkly, bright colored things. And so we literally painted like this huge like mural. It was like this big tree with neon paint on this black paper we hung it up we had neon stuff absolutely everywhere we had like neon stuff for you to paint your body and your clothes so everybody shows up but meanwhile like i had shane's brother pop in a surprise from the other side of florida and he comes in <laughs> I'm not there. I'm setting up for the party. Shane is at home. He comes in wearing a mask to kidnap him. I mean, if that happened to me, I would call the cops or freak out, like something. I mean, he maybe he like just knew based on like height, size, voice, <laughs> whatever, who it was, but he kidnapped him and a few of his other friends were there. And he forced him to like keep him busy while we finished setting everything up and while people were, were arriving. Forced him to do like a variety of different things that were mostly themed around Monty Python and the Holy Grail. <laughs> it was so funny. So we had him following him around with coconuts, banging them together. <laughs> then they went to Home Depot and he made him buy a shrubbery I love Monty Python and the Holy Grail and I could probably recite like the entire movie. No joke. I had to stop watching it because it wasn't fun anymore. It wasn't fun for anybody else. Not with me reciting the whole thing the whole time. This is so good. I like it better than regular French onion soup. And there's no garlic in here. You totally add garlic if you want. I don't think it needs it. I don't think everything needs garlic. So in comes Shane to the party blindfolded, holding a shrubbery, and coconuts. And he pulls his mask off. I don't think anybody had ever like planned a surprise party for him before. But he pulls his mask off and it's like all of us there. Everything is glowing because it's like now nighttime, I'm pretty sure. We had our own bartender. They kind of screwed us actually. I don't even think the place is in business anymore. Otherwise I'd tell you not to go there. They like double charged all of these people. That was kind of a disaster, but the party was so much fun. We had our friend DJ it. I like made a song for him for his birthday, which is actually like, I wouldn't say embarrassing. Not my best work. Not really my um, area of expertise either. The type of song that I was trying to sing. I wanted to record an EDM song for him because he loves EDM so much. But you know, <laughs> you can't just bust out a hit EDM song for somebody's birthday.
Oh my gosh. It's getting dark. I try so hard. I really do. You can't even taste, by the way, if you guys are like, oh, goat cheese, I would not use goat cheese. I cannot taste the goat cheese specifically in here. And I put a fair amount in. That goat cheese really adds a nice like tang, but it doesn't add like the funk that you would expect from just having goat cheese by itself. It really just helps like round out those really rich flavors. <clears throat> Oh man, guys. So we still have the tree, the neon tree. It's like on the side of our washing machine. We folded it up. I'm like, one day we'll have a game room or man cave or something and we can hang it up in there. We'll see. At this point, I feel like I would rather just like pay a professional to come in and do like a really, really awesome, because it was like me and a friend. I'm not an artist. I'd rather pay somebody to come in and do like a really awesome mural with glow in the dark paint. All right guys, this is my last bite. I am feeling pretty good right now. This is so good, <laughs> so good. It doesn't always come out exactly the way I wanted. This came out better than I expected. All right guys, well, that's it for me today. This was so, so good. Highly, highly recommend you make it. I did take some of the sauce out before I put the pasta in just because it felt like it was gonna be a little bit too much sauce, but I saved it. And so for leftovers, if I feel like, you know, leftovers gonna dry up, I saved some pasta water and I saved the rest of the sauce with like some caramelized onions in there. So I can add it to the leftovers, or if I don't need to add any more sauce to the leftovers, I could save that and make more pasta, or maybe put it over chicken. If you're worried about that same type of thing, like, oh, this is gonna be too much sauce for the macaroni, take some of the sauce out, add the macaroni in, and then you can always add some sauce back in, which is what I actually had to do. I added one of the scoops of sauce right back in and ended up being perfect. You want it to look like a little too much, but not like it's just completely drowning in it, which I feel like I have been guilty of before when I've done like the Mac hacks because I was worried that the pasta wasn't gonna cook all the way, but I hadn't even considered covering the pan to cook the pasta. So that's like just like a 
move on my end. I will be trying that next time when it comes to the pasta hack. But yeah, guys, just keep in mind, like half cook your pasta or par cook it at least by a few minutes because you're putting it back in the oven and everything. And when that happens, the pasta is going to absorb more of that sauce. It's going to expand a little bit more. So it's not going to be quite as saucy as it is before it goes in the oven. All right, guys, that's it for me today. The sun is setting out there right now. It is getting dark outside. <laughs> Oh, of course I will put the description. I will put the recipe in the description of the video so that you guys can make this for yourself. And oh my gosh, what an amazing addition this would be to your Thanksgiving dinner. Seriously. Comment below what other mac and cheeses you want to see me make next. I have a few more ideas for fall recipes. I know winter doesn't technically get here for like another month, I think. So send over any fall recipes if you want me to make them or comment them below. Let me know what you think about this freaking awesome recipe, seriously. Unless you don't like onions or cheese, you really would love this. All right guys, thank you so, so, so much for joining today. I just appreciate the hell out of you guys. I just, it means the world to me that you show up for me, watch all of my content that I work so hard on and allow me to have this amazing career even if I'm filming in the dark. Please, somebody, somebody help me. Where is my son? Thanks again, guys. And I will see you guys next time. Mm.